considering our, our time and interruptions. But today I want to cover uh, a very special topic, Call to Discipleship. And I intended to start the lesson this, this way, and even though with the time constraints, I want to, I still want to do this. Am I not close enough to it? Can you hear me now? Let's stay on top of it. Here's what I want to do. Uh, first of all, our purpose. Some of you may not be able to see this, but it's consider what it means that every Christian is called to join Jesus in his work. That's so important. And to start, start this, I want you to take a moment of just silent, bow your heads. I want you to think about what disciple work you did as a Christian this past week. a few blessings while you're at it. follow me and I will show you how to fish for people he said this as he was walking on the beach of the Sea of Galilee and he spotted two potential candidates that turned out to be two of his followers and they were Simon Peter and Andrew Matthew's Gospel, what we're covering today and what we'll cover in the next three or, or, or rather four weeks is about Matthew and God's plan of salvation for all humanity is the theme of the book of Matthew. Executing this plan that's in Matthew is a great lesson. Executing the plan is Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham, and the ruler of the universe. As I prepared for this lesson today, I did, was doing some research online, and I came across something I want to share with you, and I think you'll enjoy this as well. It's very meaningful. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Campus Crusade for Christ. They have developed something called the Jesus Film Project. And they produced this film, which is uh, 127 minutes. And uh, if you'd like to go out and see this film on your own, no charge, it's on uh, YouTube, or go to their website, which is jesusfilm.org. <coughs> jesusfilm.org. I viewed this entire film as I was preparing for this class, and it's the most interesting thing that I've seen in a long time. A British actor plays Jesus, and he does a, just an outstanding job. So I think this is, would be a nice thing for you to do individually. And it, as a matter of fact, it would be a good idea if we could, in a gathering like this, although I know we have planned lesson plans, to show this film to this group, maybe on a special evening. But uh, it, will remind, it reminded me of my responsibilities as a Christian 
and and uh, the things that I needed to be doing, the things I needed to review in being a good disciple for Jesus. Now I'd like to cover some of the, the finer points and start by reading today's lesson, which is Matthew 4, 12 through 22. If you have your Bibles, Matthew 4, 12 through 22. The Word of God. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went to Capernaum, which was by the lake of the sea of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned from the time on Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. Jesus called, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Again, as I researched this topic, I, uh, I found 10 very explicit points. I want to share those briefly with you. This will be a re review more or less of, of, of multiple verses within the Bible. Jesus exhort, exhorts us to give up everything to follow him, to become his disciple. What does that mean to be a disciple? Why is it worth giving up even our own lives for this? Question for you. What does it mean to be a disciple? said anyone else okay are you all good disciples are you doing Jesus work Brother Jack well I can't let Chip get all the credit here <laughs> so he's worth it <laughs> my dad had this poem that a friend used to end his speeches with it was it was, I won't do the whole thing, but the whole point was, and I used to put Howard O's in my treatment room right in front of this poem so he could get them. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather you walk with me than merely show the way. So to me, the disciples are examples. Well said, Dr. Jane. Anyone else? I hear some mumbling. <laughs> I, would, I would say to being mentored. If you're a disciple, you need a mentor. Good point, Lisa. What you say. Would you agree that it's hard work to be a disciple? You find it difficult to engage with people that need to be brought to Christ, that are outside Christ. You find 
it difficult to say the words? Well, let me answer for you. Yes, you do. <laughs> I'm a prime example. It's a difficult thing to do, but it's something that we need to work on and practice. And I suppose that's a reason that's embedded into this lesson series this month, is to remind us of the importance to consider what it means that every Christian is called to join Jesus in his work. Back. Yes. I think one thing is we, we can do uh, that's pretty easy is to invite people. Say again, invite please. Invite people. Invite. Invite people, yes. To our church. That's a responsibility. To our class. Who knows? Jesus himself has called us to be a disciple, his follower. This is the greatest call a human can have. It is a life that leads to more abundant and eternal life. I want you to think about that. I want to say that again. It's a life that leads to more abundant and eternal life. Jesus told us we'd have a good life as a follower of him. He told us we'd also have problems and challenges. But an abundant life. That's the reason I wanted you to take this moment earlier to recollect your discipleship. And did you have a moment just this week, even today, where you found the blessing based on something that you needed, something that you wanted to see happen? That happened to you this week? Happened to you today? Show of hands. Abundant life. Um, Jesus did real sick this week, and uh, people in this class, if they don't think they're disciples, they are. We helped, we felt their prayers, we got us through some really dark times, and it's just been wonderful. So, everybody in this class, it's, you are disciples, or you are my disciples, so thank you very much. Very nice, very nice, thank you, Barb. And Dick, it was good to see you back this morning. For me, as I have shared in this class before, every morning as a part of my devotional, I write down at least three blessings from the day before. Very nice. I like that. That is really nice. Every morning at her devotional time, she writes down three blessings. That's a good model for all of us. How many of you have a daily daily devotional time. If you don't, I highly recommend it. I believe that when I take my devotional time in the mornings, and I learned this, by the way, from the gentleman that's in our Friday morning class. We call our small group the Band of Brothers. We have this gentleman that's with us. He's not a member of this church or this class. His name is Bruce. And he shared with us what he does on a daily basis. And it goes like this. I go downstairs. I make a big pot of coffee. I sit down with my coffee, my Bible, in my quiet place. And when he shared that with us, I was reminded that I should be doing a similar thing. As a result, he's become my model. And I'm doing it every day. And I believe sincerely that the Holy, the Holy Spirit in me receives communication directly from God as a result of that quiet, meditation time that I speak that I spend there and it's standard for me I do it every day and I do it as soon as I get out of bed even before I do breakfast and I set the alarm so that I have that time and it just makes my day 
go so much smoother and easier and i believe that's the way god communicates to me the direction that he wants me to take that day and for my life the life of, of a disciple is constant development and growth to, to become like the master who did not sin even once despite being tempted in all things as we are let's look at Hebrews 4.15 therefore since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven Jesus the Son of God let us hold firmly to the faith we profess for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are and did not sin let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even after the death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted and given him his name, which is forever, which is above every name. Philippians 5, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. The word of God. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in very nature God God did not consider equality he did not consider himself equal with God sometimes to be used in his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death he was death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. By following Jesus and learning from him, his disciples will come to the same life he has. The life of a disciple consists of trials and <coughs> battles, but is full of joy, faith, hope, and development. I want to read that one again. The life of, of a disciple consists of trials and battles, but is full of joy, faith, hope, and development. Would you agree with that? <coughs> It is, a, it is a most interesting life to live, and those who live a disciple life become truly happy. Just imagine that we, what we can learn from Jesus the Master. To do all that is good. We can become more and more free from our lust and sinful nature. From all our limitations that have bound us and made the difficult before, we can be a true blessing to people now and in eternity. Of course, such a life comes at a cost. Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or their lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. That's my point about counting your blessings. It goes on to say, let me say that again, I should have completed it. Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters, father or mother, or wife or children or lands, for my sake in the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions in the age of age to come eternal life 
Let's read from Mark 10, 29 through 30. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home, it was repeating what I just said, so I won't, I won't go through it again. So that's where that comes from. It's Mark 10, 29 through 30. By following Jesus and learning from him, his disciples will come to the same life that he has life of a disciple consists of trials and battles, but it's full of joy, faith, hope, and development. It's the most interesting life to live, and those who live it as a disciple will become truly happy. I said that already. Forgive me. Now I'd like to read from Matthew 6 verses 31 through 34. Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now I'd like to read my favorite, one of one of my favorites. I have a bunch, but this is in the, in the top five favorite uh, verses from the Bible. It's Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Are you flying with the eagles in your discipleship? If you're not, remember this. Every Christian is called to join Jesus in his work. Questions, comments. I was remembering what the book says in the, the lesson uh, about the fact that in most uh, churches. Uh, the number of Christians are diminishing, and why that is why it's so important discipleship. Thank you, Maria. Others? Don't be mic shy now, okay? <laughs> yes. I'm in a group called the Prayer Child Ministry, and there's several in this class who are in there with me. Um, we love to crochet and knit, and we come together once a week on a Wednesday morning and uh, have a good time gossiping <laughs> or catching up on all the news. But we make prayer shawls and prayer squares, and then the ministers take those and give those out to people who need them. Uh, and those become a blessing to those people. But the blessing really is for us. 
There are about 20 of us just every week. And it is such a blessing to be with this, these women who are so devoted to this ministry and who have so much fun doing it. And I just I thank God for that ministry and these wonderful people like Betty Sue and Pat and, <laughs> and uh, there are others I know. But anyway, um, it is a blessing and we'd love to have you join us if you knit or crochet. And if you don't know how, we'll teach you. What about if you can gossip? Is that a deal? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we said. I just want to thank Chuckles and everyone else who is in that ministry because I have two prayer shawls, one for each time I had surgery. And I wore a prayer shawl for each um, uh, time I went through chemo. Each, each chemo appointment and administered to me. I'm so thankful, grateful for that. Thank you. I'm, I'm also a benefactor of those prayer shawls. My uh, wonderful daughter-in-law, married to my son David, her name is Samantha. She's a member of that group. And before <laughs> my wife passed, uh, she will be gone uh, 15th of April Three years while she was going through the cancer she received a prayer shawl at her death I received a prayer shawl and I kept bragging to my daughter-in-law that this is these are just beautiful I really enjoyed these so for Veterans Day last year she gave me beautiful prayer shawl, red, white, and blue. So I know the work that these ladies do, and they are true disciples for what they do. And I've heard such wonderful things. You just got an endorsement from Chuckles about that and from Lisa. Others, one more. <clears throat> If I may quickly add a prayer shawl endorsement. Uh, Barbara received one a couple of years ago when she had an operation. So last week I was in the hospital and uh, there were a couple nights that were quite uncomfortable. And I woke up in the middle of one night, um, just kind of tossing and turning quite uncomfortable to find that this light green colored prayer shawl was draped over my uh, sheet, over my body and I slept comfortably the worst of the night. So I'm a true believer that they, that they have a significance. And I have my mother's. We have a fine bunch of disciples in here. Would you agree? Amen. I didn't hear that. Amen. 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 That's right. Thank you for all you do. We have some wonderful disciples. You, those of you who have your uh, um, Sunday school book, go to page 38. Find the closing prayer. Everyone there? How many of you have have your books? Okay, together. Let's say this prayer, and I'll start. Thank you for calling me to your discipleship, Lord Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. 